Alrighty, we are about to get going. Make sure all my volume is playing. How's it going, everyone? We are here at the second half of this Vic game. I did not make the first half. Uh, I stayed up too late. I passed out and I slept through my alarm. So we will be doing the grand campaign after this. We're going to have probably like a six hour stream here. Two more hours of Vicky 3 and then four hours of the grand campaign after this. I have been wanting to experiment with like a late stream on the weekends for a while anyway. So I guess this kind of works out. But yeah, just a heads up about that. How's it going, Truck Nero? What's up, Titan? What's up, Neo? What's up, Hunger Pig? What's up, Momoki? What's up, Alex? So just a heads up. What has happened is obviously the end of that giant war last session in Vicky 3 happened in the treaty. We secured Western African colonies from the Germans and a number of things happened. Germany was broken up primarily. They've kind of self-united right now for the most part, but they did mostly uh, break up. Austria-Hungary lost Romania and Serbia, but they still are semi-intact right now uh, going forward. And... There was a civil war in the USA during the first half that we didn't see when a capitalist rose up against the Communist Party that is currently in power in the US. And then formal intervention from several powers happened in Belgium, which went communist, and Switzerland, which went communist. So both of those governments were overthrown. There'll be a save at it. But in RP in the game, those governments are both overthrown. So the only major communist power left right now is the US. I mean, the biggest by far, obviously. And there are some like socialist movements in countries like uh, Sweden, a little bit in Britain, and then a couple of the colonial regions as well. So that's kind of just where we're at. Generally speaking in this game, we have come back quite a bit. The last war and the colonies we've gamed have put us back on stable footing for the most part. Our naval successes in that war also did a lot to distinguish us as a threat and a, and a major player. And generally speaking, we're in a, say, a very good place for the most part. And when we get into things, I'm going to be doing Diplo with the French, the Russians, the Italians, and then probably a little bit with South America too. We're kind of going to be securing some hopefully more lasting agreements and alliances going forward. And generally we're going to work on trying to develop a bit of a coalition to uh, to intervene in the US. I mean, because that is a communist government <laughs> and one that although incredibly powerful would be seen as weakened after the civil war and is very dangerous. Or at least put in place some international agreement to assure that they can no longer begin to project extreme ideology like they've been doing in other regions of the world. So... Those are my main priorities for the next two hours of this game. John, uh, another player, did sit on Spain during the first half, so our economy is fine. The AI has not ruined us, so yeah, we're in all right shape. Hope everyone is doing good. Like I said, it will be uh, a late stream today. I, I don't know. I have been considering wanting to do late streams for a while um, on weekends. I think it's easier for me. I'm not a morning person. I never have been. Uh... It's just always rougher. So I think it might be more entertaining if I stream in the afternoons. But I know a lot of people who watch are from Europe. So we'll just see how it goes. What's up, uh, Savitas? How are you doing? I had to go to bed at the very last of the 6 p.m. campaign. Yeah, it's totally fair. What's up, Sir Bugindy? Uh, thank you for the follow. No worries, man. Were you, uh, did you join the, the development server? The, like, the modding development server? I think I remember seeing your name there. I could be completely wrong. I could have sworn. A few other things. I did put out a RP post for kind of our country going forward. I'll link it here in case anyone wants to read that. It kind of gives, I think, a good overview of where we're at and where we're kind of headed. Um... <laughs> So one of the other high points that's worth mentioning for context moving forward is that our, our heir, our crown prince, is extremely radical. He's literally radical. Um, but he's a very odd kind. He is an industrialist radical. So although he's for, like, democratic reform, giving more rights to people and things like that, he's also a hardcore industrialist. Um, and he's, he's just a pretty outlandish guy. I have a thing in that post about him. Uh, he's got expensive taste, too. So... When we, when our current king dies, Alfonso, and depending on where we're at governmentally too, because there is a movement pushing for reform, our government mechanically is very unpopular. It's been that way for a while. Most of our country wants like voting rights opened up in some format, even if it's very minor, which we haven't done at all. So 
whether or not we will have a very strong king when our heir does inherit, he is going to really shake up a lot of our foreign and domestic policy. Um, so that's interesting. We, uh, I did not expect us to get a, a radical heir like that. He looks like such a bohemian too, it's really funny. But he'd also be starting to at some point get more influence in government. His father, our current King Alfonso, very old school, very traditionalist. He's not extreme, right? But he is, you know, he, he's very not wanting to move politically. What's up, Lollipop? So we'll take some time for reform. One thing I'd wanted to do with this Spain game kind of is like, do a lot of the reform movements when the pressure builds enough. So I want to wait until we have a lot of radicals and I want to wait until like we're almost getting revolutionary threats. Cause for me, I think with conservative ideology and conservative governments, it's almost always the case. You need exorbitant amounts of pressure to really have reform. So we're going to be waiting for those. So we're going to be just dragging our feet on everything. And we'll always be a step or two behind all the other European nations in most types of reforms. Right? So important to note that as well. Just interested in what's happening, hoping to save us some money in between Unity and get a PC and try and join us for our peace sessions. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, PCs are expensive to, to get to run games, even Paradox games, so hopefully you can do that. They are fun to join, though. I'll do all those roles for the Grand Campaign tomorrow. Sounds good. No worries. I do appreciate that always, Truckanera. Yeah, gaming PCs are expensive. I mean, getting into this as a hobby is... It is not cheap, that is for sure. Ready. Well, while we're waiting, we can go do some RP. Say then there will, yeah, there will be no obstacles to expansion in Asia, so you will have your empire. Good, good. And all, all will divide right the world. In Where's Africa. You will have your empire as well. Good. Everything north of uh, Africa, by the way. I can come back later if needed. No, it's okay. We're we're just chatting. Wonderful. This is a formal uh, ambassador, the foreign minister of Spain, who's come to Paris to speak with you, on a formal level. Welcome. Uh, who am I being received by? What what what? We're the king himself. Very well. Uh, Your Majesty, I uh, thank you for allowing me uh, to speak with you. It is a great honor to be here. And it is good for our two nations to finally be back on good footing. Something that should have happened long ago. Yes, um, you know, I was a bit um, stressed by this German situation. And to be honest, at some point we thought you were allying with them. Uh, so that's why we were a bit, uh, a bit strict with you. So now that the war is over, we can resolve this, this issue and put it behind us. So... I'm glad to hear that. Yes. We, we, we did, I know, many ministers of Spain and the, uh, the ex-majesty. Uh, King Carlos did feel in many ways that France was acting very hostilely. And in many ways, I think it did push his government closer to the Germans, if anything. Uh, it's unfortunate how these things happen. But regardless, the German situation is dealt with and we can move forward. Uh, I am here primarily to speak about our relationship moving forward, as Spain does feel as though France is one of the few nations in Europe that really sees eye to eye with us on foreign policy and the dangers of radical ideology. Hmm. Yes, of course. And, uh, you know, uh, I was talking to the British ambassador and I told them, you, you leave me no choice to be the, the policeman of Europe. And they say, they deliberately said, you can. So basically they are giving up this role and, uh, we are taking it uh, as granted, and, and you can count on us to provide uh, and ensure the stability of Europe uh, as we as we proved uh, the regional intervention in Belgium and Switzerland. That's good to hear. My king is a uh, a man who cares very much for the dangers of radical ideology in Europe. There are many in the government who were very concerned with his lack of action and not interfering directly. Obviously, we gave support who those entered that war, but uh, it was qu it was quite a shame. Um, regardless, going forward, we do view as obviously the ideological sovereignty of Europe as pinnacle, as it is always this continent that will lead the earth. 
but we all have colonial empires, and the economies and power of many regions are growing, and we do worry that to police Europe is not enough. We wish to have a formal discussion with you about steps that can be taken to ensure that radical ideology is also not gaining much traction in other regions, and what you currently have planned for that. We... The only European power we have to convince to get on our side against USA is the UK. And they are neutral, I, I, I perceived. They are not uh, yet, uh, they are not remain, remaining allies now. But they are not uh, hostile to them. Because they told me apparently they support any government that uh, got elected through a democratic uh, process. So basically, uh, we 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 can count on them uh, maybe to stay neutral in a possible intervention against the USA. We we under, America is of course the biggest issue and the largest danger. But I'm here more to talk about in the long term as well, as other nations will go with this path forward. Spain does think it is worth considering an explicit organization, an explicit entity, an explicit treaty with concerned nations to be more active with preventing outright radical revolution, especially the violent kind throughout the world, whether it be the US or in other regions. I think we can use the concept of Europe for that. Uh... We have doubts. Already, we find it to be questionable that the concert of Europe allowed radical governments to be a part of the conversation. In the past, the American government was given a voice there. And to us, that suggests that this organ does not have the concerns of ideology first and foremost. We agree that using that format is useful. But why I'm discussing explicitly is a treaty and an entity outside of it, in junction with the Congress, that can be more active about pushing for action. As we saw in the recent war, many nations, including our own, ignored the dangers in Belgium and Switzerland in order to prioritize political means, which is understandable, but that speaks to this danger. I think we can make the concert of Europe back to what it was before like preserving the stability and the ideological stability of Europe before. Obviously, we, I understand your concerns that uh, maybe it's got shifted a bit over the decades, but now we we have the support uh, of Russia as well uh, to, to unpower again the concert of Europe. Uh. So, yes, if you think you, we can uh, create another organization, uh, I understand, but I don't think that's necessary. I just think we... You really feel as though the concert of Europe has done an effective job of preventing radical ideology appearing? Well, out of RP, it was more like uh, we were too busy to intervene in Belgium and Switzerland. Uh, out of RP, that yes, that's true. But it also just completely ignored things like the US going radical as well as radical, like rising up in other countries. That That's the point my master is making out of RP. Well, the thing is, uh, most of European powers are concerned about USA right now so I don't think we have to worry actually we just need to sway Britain the most we can or at least keep them neutral and then we can proceed Spain sees a danger in inaction and concern is a useless sentiment when radicalists are seizing power and spreading because it's like a disease a disease yes. does not stop on one body it moves to others and we have seen this with the inaction that has come out of the Congress. That is our concern here. You are saying that you wish to be the police of Europe. And as such, really the policeman of the world, as Europe is, at the end of the day, the preeminent continent in the world. And we wish to make it very clear that we do not think that simply being concerned is enough to prevent the rise of radicalism. Uh, the thing is, as I told you, I just want, I just need... Uh... Basically, obviously, what I'm going to say is strictly confidential, but we are developing uh, landing crafts so that we can uh, possibly invade the USA shores. So when we can implement this into our, our Navy, we will be fully ready to intervene. I, I understand that you have the technological ability to fight a war. 
My concern is not that. My concern is what we put in place to ensure action is taken. I am the ambassador of Spain. I represent the interests of the crown first and foremost, but I also represent other interests in my government. And my own king, this is confidential, is in some ways also a danger in this, as many fear he will not be willing to take necessary action without mechanisms in place to force his hand, as with other governments. What I am here to suggest to you, and what many interests in my government wish to see happen, is explicit treaties or explicit requirements that action is taken. You want the any country of to be more reactive, basically. We do not, yes, but we don't feel as though the Concert of Europe can ever do that itself, and we are here to discuss steps. And given that you are taking the head on this, we wish to know how you think that can be done. I mean, either we do it case by case, or we do a treaty or something against radical uh, governments. Are, are you but, asking uh, or suggesting? I, I'm suggesting both, but uh, we could obviously talk about it with uh, the Russian Empire, Italy. We, we think a formal conference is necessary in order to put in place definitive agreements to ensure this happens. Do what we have seen work? in the last 30 years and the reason that this Goliath in the West exists is because countries have lots of concerns but take no action. And we need to do something to change that or else this will repeat itself, whether in the US, whether in Germany, or whether in another country. I think a conference is a very good idea. Do you want to host it? In Madrid? We would be honored, but or it's not Barcelona, required. Barcelona, I don't know. Barcelona would be fine. Okay. So as I said, um, for example, including social democrats, labor union representative in governments, it can be accepted. But as we said, if the socialists get too much power in one country or communists that we consider it radicalized we do as well it is at the point that any of those entities reach power we can tolerate the liberals yes. we do not respect them much in my country but we tolerate them it is these radical governments that we cannot accept and we cannot allow to exist we are on the same page good in that case, we will we will speak with other countries as well. But we also came here before such a thing exists to make sure we're on the same page with you, which is that it is not enough to simply talk about things. We need to take action, and we need yes, to ensure our governments can. Okay, good. I completely agree. Also, I will let you know when uh, our army is going to intervene in the United States of America. Of course, that is a process that will need to take time, and. Yes. Uh, it, it, it is questionable whether our king will will be willing to even take that step, which is why this conference is very key um, in many ways for us. I just to do. Very well. That was the main thing we wish to discuss with you. Did you have anything else? Not at the moment, um, but uh, about the trade agreement we are about to sign. Um, is there a list of goods that you need to... Especially... I will have to take a look at my numbers, which I haven't seen yet, but generally speaking, um, I do believe we are in need of, I want to say basic goods, like agricultural and grain and stuff like that in particular, but I'll have to look at those numbers specifically. I can uh, shin you a list particularly. Are there any you are looking to import? Uh, we need um, explosives, if you have a... We do not have a huge excess of those. We could begin to produce them, but it's not going to be one of our primary goods produced. Is there anything else? Mm. Glass, perhaps. Glass, we do have a very large industry of and could expand and export to. All right. And I will also need to look at my numbers. Very well. And come back to you. We will also be detaching... I already have detached many of our trade routes with the Germanic countries, so we will need to fill those for both imports and exports. So generally, getting our economies and trade routes more 
uh, active with one another without specific goods is useful as well. Okay. Very well, Your Majesty. I thank you for receiving me here in Paris, and I will make haste back to Madrid to speak with my government. And we look forward to uh, ensuring the world is a stable one without radicalism. We will reach it, don't worry. Thank you for your visit, my friend. And you as well. This is a long load. I do want to go speak with the Russians and then the Italians, but we'll wait a minute on that. God damn, this rehost is always so long. What is the HRE CK3 game happening? It starts a week from today. Uh, oh, sorry, a week from yesterday. It will be Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. EST will be that game. So, yeah. That was one of the reasons I was up late. I'm working on something for that campaign, which is going to be really cool, so... The game is not frozen. It's just taking forever to load. You, if you uh, with Vic three, if you see the cogs moving, you know you're fine. If you don't see the cogs moving, you're fucked. So, yeah. A multiplayer game with fifty people is just very difficult to load into. Always. You don't have the right rules. Uh, yeah. Just grab the Vic ones and you can see it. You got a couple of ideas on my mod, and the monotone video will help. Uh, help me. But do you have any suggestions? Uh, generally speaking, no. Um. I have never done a lot of research into, like, I guess, like, what alternatives for the post-war period would be like for Russia itself. If it's not a communist USSR, it's a Hoya mod. So, I mean, you just want to generally, like, work on, like, the different ways a post purely, I guess, communist USSR would look. Because there's a lot of ways you could go with that. That's up to you, man. I, like, I just, I'm not an expert on that period. You want to join the CK3 HRE game, but I believe that one starts next week. It'll be uh, one of the sessions of the D&D campaign I'm DMing. But you can always join it partway through. You don't need to be in the first one. And yeah, Paradox games do need a supercomputer. It's kind of crazy. You When you look at a strategy game, you don't think like, oh, this is going to like kill my PC. Like, uh, I mean, what's the what's the bar for graphics these days? Dark Tide or something? But yeah, no, they, fu they fuck it up. You need a lot, a lot of active RAM. That's the big thing, I'd say. HRE is always fun and chaotic, so now Croatia and Poland always end up in the HRE. Yeah, I, I, like every player will be within it too. I think we're going to have some support GCs on surrounding big countries like France and stuff like that, and maybe Poland. But most of the players will be in the HRE itself, so it'll be interesting. It's just that their MP optimization is complete ass. That is also another huge thing. Paradox is very, well, I guess Paradox devs are very outspoken about their disregard and... I would even go with contempt for multiplayer in their games, so there's not a lot of effort put into that. And a pizza on focus tree? Absolutely. No, unironically, give you like give, give a sieve or two, you know? Gorbachev is in like a Pizza Hut commercial. That'd be a funny focus. Kind of like an Easter egg too. That ad is so fucking funny though. Kind of crazy that got made. Like, that's actually crazy it got made, honestly. Okay. Putting an ERP here. I don't think so. All right, we are going to be here for a while. So, what's up, tall? Oh my god, is that John? What the fuck is up? How you doing, John? Hope life is well for you, man. You were right about the SSD. I should have listened to you a long time ago, man. I should have listened and I didn't. <laughs> How's work been, dude? I played William the Conqueror before. The most recent update in HRE managed to de jure drift, drift Aquitaine, Poland, and Hungary. Jesus Christ. So they basically just became the EU then. At least they have MP and modders that have uh, have to mod it in. Yeah. I won't rant about that. But I just don't like that they like will lean so heavily on modders. I feel like that is really an active choice by many of their dev teams. Or at least their management. What's up, Fuzzy? Is that Fuz? Is that is that the Fuz who has uh, a large enjoyment in real estate? Or is this a different one? 
How's it going? I just played the game in the atrium, failed to snag Poland, but Croatia, due to the Mongols, destroyed the Byzantines. Dude, is it me or has the Mongols gotten way stronger in CK3 recently? I, I don't know. Like, I did a single player game for fun to learn tours and tournaments better, and, like, uh, they fucking destroyed everyone. And in the grand campaign, they, they got all the way to Germany. Like, they destroyed uh, Byzantium and stuff. It's crazy. I like it. Don't get me wrong. It's fantastic, but it's, it's very different. Because in, like, the first year or two of CK3, the Mongols... They weren't weak, but I always felt like they just didn't impact hard enough, right? I'm sure they put in a lot of work to improve them, but it's it's really noticeable now, I'd say. It is. Oh, hell yeah. How's it going, dude? It's like nine day with SSD. I'm doing good. I'm on a break at the moment. Nice. So you're still at work then? Or do you have the day off? Hell yeah. And yeah. Like, uh, doing editing, like launching games or doing any program on my computer with an SSD is like kind of crazy. Because I've used hard drives my whole life since I was a kid. And I just never... Like, people always said SSDs were better. And I was like, okay, yeah. Like, you get a little bit of an improvement. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not what that is. Kind of crazy. You're kind of scared for a, a Taurus Civil War or a Taurus Exiling. Yeah, there's a good chance of that. Just a heads up. We are doing the Grand Campaign after this today. In around an hour and a half. Because this rehost is really long. So, just heads up. CK2 Mongols were scary. Yes, they were. Especially because of when they added the DLC that put disease mechanics into the game, right? That made it especially fucking hardcore. Because they usually hit together, in, in my memory at least. Oh, you're still at work? Gotcha, man. Yeah, weekends I know are your busy time. Mongols and CK3 either are you're on Europe's doorstep or explode before within a few years. True. But I've noticed they just, or in my games I've seen, they, they tend to get a lot further a lot quicker. Tired after that wedding trip and found the energy to crack a cold one to watch Manchester City lift a Premier League title earlier. Are you a Man City fan? I forget that they exist and they're not like just Saudi princes. There are actual Man City fans. It's always a a crazy thing to, to conceptualize. <laughs> no, I, I would never suggest bandwagoning. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. They are a fantastic team to watch, though. There's no denying that. Like, they're fantastic to watch, but it, it just, like, also feels like when you play Football Manager or FIFA and you just stack your team so much, you're just like, well, is this fun anymore? I mean, like, is this really fun anymore? Or are we just too good? That's what actual Man City is currently like. Like, it's even worse. It's almost even worse than, like, peak, like, fucking... Eh, well, I don't know. Peak Barcelona... Yeah, it's tough to say. I mean, Pep's in there for both, so, yeah. Well, I'm a uh, Pep Guardiola and Erling Haaland fan, so I guess I'm a Man City fan. Okay, that's respectable. If you're there for if you're there for Pep or you're there for a player, I, I can respect that. What I can't respect is the people like, I'm a Man City fan, hell yeah! Name any of their players prior to, like, 2020, and then it's like, no. All right, we are about to actually get going here. I'm going to look at our economy, get the state of things, try and stabilize if needed. Then we're going to go talk with the Russians and the Italians and the Portuguese. So it'll be a long, long diplo today as well. But I mean, it is an RP game to be expected. There may be an unannounced stream next couple days with me playing single player friends with the DLC for Vic as well. So keep your eye out for that. I may just do it Wednesday uh, for that stream, but I also may just do it another day. So... I do want to play around with those mechanics and have some fun, so keep an eye out for that. It may happen, may not. What's up, Technic? How's it going? What's up? 24 games unbeaten, so they're really playing on easy mode. They really are. It's ridiculous. I'm able to get off on Saturdays now, so I'm going to be joining RP games on Saturday. Depending on how that goes, I might be able to switch to Sundays for Vic 3, which is my main game I want to get into. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, Sunday, the Sunday Vic games are, are a lot of fun. What succession law do we have at RP in the Grand Campaign? Because Lysander the Fourth has only a daughter and should be able to die out of nowhere. We would have like uh what like the the succession mode that like always prioritizes sons and firstborns, but you can succeed as a daughter if needed, right? Like that's what happened with Castora. So if there is a daughter and no male options, uh, they succeed. If there is a younger man, even if there's an older daughter, uh, the 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 man succeeds. 
So yeah, it would go to his younger brother if there's a, if a, a younger one. Welcome back, Technic. I'll openly state I wasn't watching City before Pep joined, but I was a huge fan of him at Barcelona, so I followed him around. That's fair. His style of play is just like so fun to watch, entertaining and innovative, so it's hard not to. Yeah, male preference, cognitive, cognitive succession, I think. I'm trying to remember the CK3 succession terms for it. I think I've got that right. We actually have an eco. Why did we not get the colonies save edited? Hold up. That's super fucking weird. Okay, um, you get a full in for scomo. To figure out what's going on with that. Cool. Yeah, Germany's gonna uh, transfer them to us at the at the rehost. So we'll get them in a moment. How's RP so far, by the way? Good. Uh, I'll be honest. I slept through the morning stream and I slept through... Uh, I got to the rehost five minutes late. I... I've always been fine with jet lag and I've always been fine with, like, getting back on a sleep cycle. But after my, like, vacation recently, when I went to Scotland, I have struggled so hard to get back on a sleep schedule. It's never been this bad ever in my life. Like, it's just been jumping around, so... Uh, it's been a pain in the ass. I also need to force myself to actually try and go to sleep, but I've always had that thing where, like, I'll lay down to go to sleep. Like, I remember in my teens and my early 20s, I, like, always factor in my schedule an hour to two hours to get to sleep. Because I'll lay down, I'll, I'll, like, try and go to sleep, and then I can't turn my brain off, and it takes forever. And I have to force it, but it's even worse when my sleep schedule's not well. I don't know if anyone else deals with that. It fucking sucks. Dude, my brother... I lived with my brother for a little while, and he's the exact opposite. It, it, I, I really... I'm envious of people like that. He will lay down and I will hear him snoring in five minutes. And like that shit blew my mind. I never conceived that people did that before. And uh, cause I can't do that unless like I have been up for like 30 hours and I just like ran or something. No, not happening. Anyway. Have you tried the new tournament mode in CK3? Yes, it is fantastic. I love it. I gotta get back to it. Have a good stream, everyone. Check around, John. Keep up with it. I'm looking forward to seeing you in games. It's been a while, and uh, that'll be a lot of fun. I still have no idea how to manage my econ or how to use generals. The first one is a long answer. Hello there. Hello, this is uh, the representative from the Weimarer Republic um, of Germany. Um, looking to figure out um, uh, to make sure that we are in line uh, with the, pr the provisions um, in uh, the Treaty of Versailles. Um, Regarding the colonies that need to be uh, transferred over um, to the Spanish government, and you're wondering which ones uh, those were in particular. Wonderful. Uh, Ambassador, they were all of your Western uh, holdings, so anything on that West Coast, north of Portugal, south of the Netherlands, will be transferred to my government in line with the Treaty of Versailles. Very well. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And, and I thank you uh, for honoring the treaty. Uh, do you have a moment? If so, we would like to talk uh, economic options with you. As part of the treaty, we did wish to fulfill our statement as to help you rebuild with an agrarian uh, expansion. Yes, uh, we are um, currently uh, in the works of making sure that these uh, these provisions are being in line. Um, there is a few uh, issues uh, regarding um, the legitimacy of our government uh, as well as um, other uh, elements uh, within our society that are uh, pushing back some of these uh, reforms and making it uh, an issue, uh, as well as the, the Fry Corps that are um, kind of wreaking havoc along our society, as well as keeping um, the socialists in line while it's keeping a weird uh, cow towing an odd line. Um, but we are looking um, to uh, establish um, these economic uh, 
That, that is exactly the region we did wish to provide you with an economic package. Out of RP, if I tried to bankroll you, it would be like a, a fourth of my economy. I can't do that. Um, but I will do a save at request if we agree to something to s transfer you funds. Uh, we were looking to s potentially give you around a two to three million uh, peso contribution, obviously to be primarily and entirely almost used for agricultural expansion in your country to meet the terms of the Treaty of Versailles economically. Um, but we are open to delivering it to you if your government is willing to obviously use it for those means. Yes, as long as this uh, came with no further stipulations uh, regarding, um, as long Just... as these businesses continue to be German-owned um, and there was no uh, no upsurping of uh, the, the, the German ownership of capital and land, um, that would be uh, agreeable. I can assure you it will be entirely domestic. We want to ensure, I know many... Uh, nations in the post-war period are looking to see you currently uh, be very weak. We do remember our time as a friend with Germany, and we wish to ensure that your nation can stand strong and proudly, and we wish to facilitate that through this. So, how does a $2 million package, with the only string being it goes to agricultural expansion in your country, sound with your government? Very well, that sounds agreeable to us. Wonderful. No, there's no strings attached to it. We wish to see you walk out of this as a proud and strong country, and we hope we can play a part in that. Very well, and we have just uh, signed away the uh, official uh, legislation in uh, the capital city of Weimar that sees um, the uh, transfer of those colonies to the Spanish government. We do see that, and we are happy to see that you are honoring the Treaty of Versailles um, and look forward to working with your government in the future to ensure a stable and non-radical Europe. Thank you very much. And thank you. Yeah, so one of the treaties, uh, things in the treaty was uh, Spain did force them to adapt an agrarian economy in the peace deal. Uh, the primary reason being that actually that didn't happen. Save it, it didn't happen today. That's the big thing that kind of is fucking some stuff up here. But they do will have an agrarian economy as we thought the best way to keep Germany solvent, to keep them stable, but also not a threat as an industrial power was to make them a transition to an agrarian economy which spain spearheaded in the treaty and got support for from everyone involved except for the americans so yep america had a civil war they're still really strong and they are fully communist as you can see here no one else in my vc because i heard that sound nope, we're good but yeah the tournaments are amazing i can't wait to do that in multiplayer next week that's going to be so fun All right, so we are going to get our concessions in the treaty, which is all this West African region, which we're going to push into and expand much more dramatically. Let's take a look at colonial expansion and what we can do here. West Africa, I think that'll be about it. We cannot get any more institutions in colonialism because I think we're missing a technology for that. Get malaria prevention, which is quite ahead of time. <laughs> Getting socialism. <sighs> We are trying to pass property to women. I'm not sure why we're doing that. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. I've done no RP for that, so we'll remove it. We're going to head for cultural exclusion. This was one thing I did want to do, because everyone supports it at this point. Like, like no means. We're not... I'd have no plans, really, the whole game to go multicultural. But I did want us to get to cultural exclusion and stay there for the rest of the game at this point, because we are there in terms of recent changes and the uh, the cultural status of colonies, which we also need to go talk to. Yeah, the politics of this game are crazy, too. All right, let's go talk with the Russians if we can. He is busy, I think. Quick DM and then we'll see. If not, I'll go hop in and talk to someone else. Liberia is player controlled, yes. They're a colony of uh yes, they're a colony of communist USA. Technology wise, let's work on pump jacks, I'd say probably. Oil is starting to become a relevant thing. We have integrated almost not at all into our economy, if you could follow Ian, but other countries have. So we know the use of it. And Germany did discover a little bit of oil in the River Delta. Uh, we don't expect it to be a lot, but we, we might as well go a little bit into that. 
Do they have one colony or do they have more than one? They have two. They have the Shanty and then they have uh, Liberia. And then they have Mexico and Central America and their Customs Union. Are they trading with us? Check that real quick. I assume almost certainly not, but I will check. Oh, we're good. All right, let's look at the eco. We'll get distracted and not do this in a second. Double beam options. Oil options. Import art from Italy. Everyone needs explosives, including us. So we'll need to work on that. My god, we need engines. Are we exporting? Is that why? Oh my gosh, yes. Look at that. We're even protecting domestic supply. Okay. Yeah, I did want us to become one of the primary engine producers, and I guess we really have no choice now. It's also because our colonies have developed a bunch of infrastructure for railways, and we need to meet that. Oh my god, we really need everything, don't we? Basic goods is what we want, though. We want to produce a lot of these luxury goods if we can. Open up these routes. Our trade competitiveness will be... She won't be too high. We're really far behind on tech, aren't we? And we need way more transportation, too. My god. That rubber. My actual god. Look at that. Hold on. I made a route with America. I'll cancel that in a minute. When I asked for West Africa, I'm going to be honest, I completely forgot it had rubber. <laughs> Which is horrible, because that's like the one thing that the Belgian Congo is like infamous for. It will be very useful for us. I'd love to see a mod that allows the exportation of services later on as like a representation of like, forms of basic media. Exports. Ooh, okay. Fabric just balanced out. We'll hold on to everything else, too. With all that rubber, can we utilize it in any of our own buildings? are starting to fully build up power plants in order to do that we'll actually need to make them profitable as well let's we'll start by lighting the capital we have the amount for it i'll just cancel our fertilizer trade routes or they should automatically just go down on their own Russia is busy. Hello there, is this a good time? Hello, welcome to Lisbon. Just give me one second. Of course. Hello, are you listening well? Yes, I am. No worries at all. I am the uh, foreign minister of Spain. I can wait as long as you would like. No, you are very welcome to Lisbon. How can we help you? We well, thought a conversation is long due. Uh, our governments have not communicated much in recent years, and we do feel as though we need to remedy that situation. Uh, we are yes, here primarily to speak agree. about our current status uh, as nations that share in the same uh, corner of the world, uh, as well as colonial and ideological talks as well. If your government is willing to... Uh, enter into those at this time oh yes yeah, so absolutely uh we are neighbors uh we do agree that we do need to have always 
some sort of communication between our countries. Um, it's been a long time that we haven't had a, a proper conversation concerning the, the world situation and both of our empires, but we are very glad that you came to, to Lisbon to discuss those matters. Good. We're in full agreement on that then. Let's start yes. with the elephant in the room, and that is one that my government does need some clarification on, which is your current status with the, uh, the United States, or the United Syndicates of America, I should say they're calling themselves now. Yes, uh, we've made a recent uh, defensive pact with the United States. Uh, our governments are similar concerning ideology and political international stance in the world. Uh, so we do favor the United States of America alongside with the United Kingdom as our two main allies in the international stage. United, uh, Britain, just to clarify, has begun to drift away from the United States. I'm sure you are aware of that at present. We do feel that as a, I'm going to be frank with you, a strategic yes. threat, given that you have a active military relationship with a communist nation, um, one that is beyond dangerous and beyond untenable in its ideology at present. We understand you have had built a history with them, but their government is radical enough that there is a shift beginning to take place in Europe of a more active participation in ensuring that they are isolated. And personally, Spain is very threatened by this pact as they have already made it clear they are willing to attack us to take what they want. And with an ally directly bordering us in Iberia, it is a real danger for our government and our nation. We do understand your concern. Our agreement with the United States is a defensive one. Uh, it's not... Uh, does not contemplate if there is an attack, um, uh, how do you say it, perpetrated? Um, perpetrated, made yes. By, yes, made by the United States. If the United States attack you, you are not forced to uh, align with them. The concern uh, is that your government is willing to enter into any relationship with them, let alone a military one. That is what is a pinnacle concern to us. We understand that you wish to have a degree of protection that such defensive agreements have. We understand that you have a history with them, which has caused that to happen. But our concern is that you are doing it with such a, a radical one and, and one that is a threat, not just to any colonial empire, of which you are one, but the world as a whole. Is there any information that the Spanish government has uh, concerning hostile... Um intentions of the United States concerning Europe. Uh, the war in Germany is a pinnacle example of their willingness to intervene for their own reasons. And as I'm sure you are aware, the current communist party uh, in the United States is very vocal about its desire for international solidarity and anti-imperialism uh, behavior. We saw that in Cuba. We saw that in the war in Germany. And the party itself is very vocal about their desire to take any foreign policy needed to ensure that happens. I'm not sure what more evidence really can be given conclusively to suggest that. Yes. On the other hand, uh, our spies in South America um, and in the American Congress that is presently happening, um, they are informing us uh, of... Um, just one moment, just one moment. Of course. Oh, God. Made the wrong decision uh, concerning the exhibition. Well, never mind. Uh, uh, I just chose the option of losing one point, but whatever. Um, <laughs> um, our spies in, in the American Congress uh, they are informing us that there is a possibility of, uh, how can I put it, um, of a joint American, I would not say coalition, but a, a, a joint American bloc that would rival Europe concerning uh, economic issues. Um, our approach concerning international affairs has been, for the last decades, a neutral one. So we do consider 
that having an European country able to, to, to dialogue with the United States of America can be a positive thing, uh, a, a good thing for Europe. You are speaking about a dialogue with the most extreme radicalism the Earth has ever seen. You are aware of this? Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, we, we do not consider the United States of America a threat to the world presently. Well, that's because we do have a good relations with them. Um, and we haven't seen them making any public um, condemnation or uh, trying to do any hostile uh, move towards Europe. I mean, the war against Germany, it was a war that involved many European countries, including Spain, uh, France, and, and, and Russia. So we Why did America speak. enter that war? We are not informed about that. They entered the war in order to free nations, colonial nations, and destroy Germany's influence outside Europe. That is a direct threat to a European state. There are other countries like ourselves who entered in order to take those colonies as their actions in the Molotov Conference and after were unacceptable. But the United States explicitly entered to free them and to find more radical allies in Africa. But the Germans' colonies, they were, none of them were transferred to the United States of America. That is correct. That is it? only because all of the other major powers got together and agreed to force out America's demands, which was to free many of those countries. And we formed a block against them. If that didn't happen, they would have forced that in the peace treaty. Yes. Well, we do not agree with the, 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 the end of the European colonies in Africa or in, 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 in any part of the world. Um, that we will oppose the United States of America since our uh, treaty does not involve any kind of, of, of these matters. Our, our treaty is mainly a, a, a trade one, an economic one, and of military aid concerning um, a defensive pact. All the, the other matters the treaty does not cover and we are not forced to, 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 to support uh, the United States if they go um, against uh, uh, an European country. If Spain is worried about having a land border uh, against your kingdom uh, by any foreign nations, we can assure you, regardless of the nation, we will never support that. It is still a major threat that you're even willing to work with this government to us as it does severely bring into question uh what your government is willing to accept and do as we do um, view this country to be incredibly dangerous well um our our government position portugal uh, aligned uh, with both the united kingdom and the united states since they do have uh, a reasonable uh, agreements and, and understanding we just uh, confirmed with the, with the british government that they do have uh, understanding with the united states concerning several topics um Th that's correct but we were we were informed and i hope correctly that they have begun to pull away from actively cooperating with the us as much did you get clarification on that um, I, mean, I may be misinformed but that is what i was told Okay, no, we just, not now, just like okay. half an hour ago, we we talked with the British government. I see, okay. Uh, British government, Britain is our oldest and, and, and present, I wouldn't say the strongest, uh, but it's our oldest and it's the alliance that we respect the most. And we just confirmed with them if there was nothing against with us aligning with the United States, since we consider the United States as an ally to Britain as well. Um, they confirmed us that they do have some kind of understanding and, and, and they do agree on a lot of matters concerning the world stage. Concerning so, the United States intervention in Europe, we do completely oppose that kind of intervention and we do oppose any kind of American inter in, in, in interference in, in European matters worldwide. We do respect, though, uh, the American position concerning the American continent. We will not interfere on that. 
Um, but any kind of hostile activities of the United States of America concerning any European power, we will not uh, side with the United States of America. That is uh, unfortunate to hear. In that case, I'm afraid my government cannot proceed with any other topics at this time with the Kingdom of Portugal. We're very sad to hear that you are turning a blind eye to the danger and radicalism in Washington. Um, yeah, so there, unfortunately, that will be where this conversation has to end then. Very well, sir. Uh, Very well. Either way, you have uh, um, a friendly nation here that desires no uh, hostile activity, no, no kind of wars in the future. Very well. Very well. Thank you for your time. A good day, sir. Find the BC I'm going to. So. Hello. Hello. This is the ambassador to Italy here to speak with a member of your government regarding a range of issues. Mario, you are speaking to the um, the foreign minister himself, Dante Scagliori. Wonderful. We wish to speak with you on several topics. The first one of which is we wish to uh, formally congratulate your government on the successes of the Germanic coalition war. We are very happy with the outcome there. Uh, and we look forward to second continuing to cooperate in order to keep a balance in Europe, uh, as well as many other matters. We are also glad to see uh, that you did hope to get rid of the communist threat in Europe. And I do send the condolences of members of my government that my king was unwilling to take the action needed there uh, to rid Europe of that threat. Luckily, the uh, French king uh, proved to be just as adamant as the Italian one when it comes to dealing with the uh, communist nations of Belgium as well as Switzerland. Okay, out of RP, those will be saved as it back to Republic. Yes, I heard about that. All right, cool. Um, but yes, uh, the gratitude is much appreciated. What, uh, which other topics did you wish to discuss? We wish to formally discuss the topic of further collaboration. We have worked together for quite some time. We've supported your interests and you have supported ours. I'm sure you are aware that it was our country that advocated for you receiving Abyssinia in Africa. And we hope that is a, shine, a sign of our desire to work together moving forward very closely. As we do view as our shared Catholic values are ones that will make for stronger alliances than perhaps some of the other things that dictate them with other countries. Yes, we agree fully. Uh, aside from Abyssinia, uh, uh, another update is that we have also gained access to the North African territories of Tunis and Libya that will be transferred to us after the Second Balkan War that is currently underway. That is good to hear. I do see that. Uh, who's involved with that? Uh, Russia... And Turkey, Bulgaria. I see. Yeah. That is... Good to hear. Then your clonal holdings will be expanding uh, very quickly. Um, the main thing I wish to speak to you, though, is regarding the future. We have heard stirrings that, as always, Spain is under threat internationally. And with the continued state of radicalists in the U.S., as well as the threats from other regions, we wish to discuss a formalizing of our current status as, as what we now consider to be allies in order to jointly cooperate and to defend one another as Catholic brothers and have nations who will face the future together. Yes, we we do agree that this uh, proposal would be prudent um, to create. Wonderful. We, we could write up the treaty uh, in particular, but the broad strokes of it would be we would be uh, looking for support militarily in the event of uh, invasion and we'd also wish to collaborate on all colonial and foreign wars of expansion with one another spain would of course support you in anything that you need in africa or elsewhere and you likewise would support us given obviously due cause and reasonable judgment yes that was uh, our intended uh, suggestion as well good okay so we will formally uh we not make it yet no we only can have one um so we decided that we sh we're not going to do in-game alliances because they cause problems when adding war goals. Um, uh, you want to just do a defensive pack then? 
defensive pact also causes issues. So oh, okay. we're just going to keep them in our peep. Uh, Sounds good. How do we notify when, all the other players so they know, though? Um, we'll make we'll put, make an RP post about it. But many people won't see that when they look at countries. That's the issue. Is that like going to be GC policy? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, we'll need to we'll need to find some way. We could look into the mod out of RP and see about finding some way to put it in without mechanical things, just so it's clear, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, similar to the guarantee we have. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Wonderful. Uh, when you mentioned that Spain is under threat internationally, are there any nations in particular that are threatening you? Um, we did have... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let's do guarantees and we'll do it that way. I'll do the same okay. with... French too. Um, we had a letter from Colombia regarding basically wanting to annex Venezuela was the gist of it. Whereby uh, they suggested that they wish to reform Grand Colombia and had wished for our government to facilitate this happening. Given the government in Venezuela is not radical, like many of the other nations in America are going, given we have a close relationship with them, and given we have had no indication they wish to remove their current relations with us, we are quite worried. After sending that letter to Colombia, we received no response, nor any diplomatic correspondence from other South American countries, which is quite worrying. And given the United Syndicalists of America are certainly pushing their radical ideology there, we are worried that that will come to a head in the future. Yeah, so one thing I do realize is that uh, if we are to, because I do agree that having Venezuela as a stronghold against radicalism would be very useful uh, for our mutual interests. We agree. Uh, we do see the risk of the United States of America joining uh, the Colombian side. We see that very much to be the likely case, unfortunately, in Madrid. Um, they have already made it clear that they intend to take anything that they feel they have the right to by force and uh, we need to begin to defend against that and it will not stop in the americas they'll move to the rest of the world as soon as they're done there you are a wise enough nation i think to know that yes um and we do see a logistical issue given that the united states currently have a larger navy than um the two of our, two of our nations combined their military power is quite out of hand. We do wish to have a formal talk, and we will be actually calling for a conference in Barcelona in order to discuss more active treaties and actions by concerned states to rid the world of radicalism. Notably, France and Russia will be attending, and we hope that you would as well. We will. Attend. Good. We think it is important to, uh, to take direct action going forward. Um, the other thing I wish to discuss with your country is your colonial plans going forward we we see that you have secured that north african region but do you have other plans i don't have any plans in particular um we as uh, most of the world uh, got uh, colonized while we were um, under the um, <coughs> process of unifying our peninsula however we have taken notes that albania will be released as an independent country from the balkan war should russia win and it does appear that way. Uh, so we will likely be uh, moving towards the Balkans for the See? future. Uh, In that regard, you don't have any uh, plans to go further into Africa or Asia? Uh, not at this time, no. Uh, we still have our grievances with uh, Lombardy and Venetia to deal with, with Austria-Hungary as well. I see. In that case, we do want to potentially become more evolved ourselves in Africa. We also do have designs on the Arabic, uh, the Arabian region. We have seen that as being strategically useful for quite a while, just to make you aware of our own interests. We will do no actions in the Americas, as we are trying to work with South America still, despite their actions there. I will be frank. Uh, it is quite worrying to see. You are aware of the situation in Brazil, I hope, um, Minister. Uh, not particularly. Could you elaborate? There has been a lot of suggestions that the United Syndicalists of America have been pushing radical ideology in Americas for quite some time, and it has begun to reach ahead. Uh, Sao Paulo has gone dark on us, as well as many of our other historical allies in South America, and we do have reports that the socialists and radicals are beginning to take over many of those democratic institutions in the region. At this time... That's... Hmm? That is very concerning. It is. And we did have explicitly stated 
from the Portuguese foreign minister that there is talks of a combined alliance of all of South America, North America, and Central America, with the exception of our friends in Venezuela. Something we wish to make you aware of to understand the gravity of the situation. Out of RP, what's that coalition against? You. It's out of RP, I don't know. He mentioned it to me. It sounds just like a giant power block to rival Europe was the quote. Okay. Right. Which Portugal is also intending to work with. We had a breakdown of communication with them when we spoke last. Mm, that is highly concerning. Uh, we would advise that you build up your um, uh, battalions on land. We uh, we are going to begin military expansion shortly, but we are doing what we can to properly uh, to light our cities with modern with modern means. Before we do that, you must understand that my king is beginning to grow. Not the most popular. He's very traditionalist, and he has stopped every reform in my country, so we're in a bit of a tough place at the moment. We share a similar uh, issue. <laughs> Understand. Uh, oh, hold up. Now... Once... Can you give me one moment, Chiefs? Yep, sure. Think of the raid, Sir Kruge. I appreciate that, man. How's it going, everyone? I'm Hammurabi. I'm a roleplay streamer. I do Paradox games almost entirely. This is a Vic3 RP game in 86. These games tend to have 30 to 60 people. Everyone role plays. It's based on realism. And uh, yeah, they tend to be very interesting, pretty chaotic. There's a communist America, which is very powerful. The Americas are going communist. Europe just fought a giant coalition war with the Germanic countries. And it is a very chaotic world right now. I appreciate the raid. I hope everyone is doing well. Also, thank you for the sub, Moose. I appreciate that. Alrighty, I apologize. Cheese. No worries. But um, back on topic. We, we, yes, we, we are trying to reach some reform. I'm sure you know about the, uh, the young crown prince. His exploits are rather infamous in Europe these days. Mm, indeed. He does throw quite lavish parties. They are, well, um, he, he is, he will be king one day. I cannot speak highly enough of the man, but they are, uh, quite out of hand at the moment. He is pushing for change along with, of course, the, um, I always forget his name, as well as uh, Senor Blanco. Um, and we are looking to put some changes into our government, as they are unavoidable these days, but it will take time. Mm, yes. Um, the king in Italy did actually try to uh, get voting rights for the aristocracy. However, the aristocracy did not want voting rights uh, and pushed back <laughs> the proposal. If only we had such reasonable men in... Uh... In Spain. <laughs> Indeed. There is desire for representation in Spain. There are cries for a constitution and a parliament. And many, including myself, have advised King Alonso that this is necessary. Uh, yet he dithers and does nothing. Mm, Regardless, we, we, he, he is a competent man and a good man. We have not had uh, any attempts at reforms. Um, and any reforms that have tried to pass have... Uh, unilaterally failed. Regardless, we will make do with what we have. I think in that way we are similar and we'll need to watch each other's backs, not just in terms of the danger in the West, the dangers of ideology, but even the dangers within. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, of course. Good. Are there any matters you wish to discuss with me or for me to take back to my king and my government? Only to once again wish him good health. And you as well. Thank you for this talk, and we look forward to what we hope to be a long relationship with another Catholic nation. Farewell. Farewell. Thank you for follow Sir Kruge. All right. That went well. Italy is the nation we've been cooperating with the most recently. Uh, they were the ones who got us into the Germanic coalition war last session. And as a fellow Catholic nation and one of the few religious countries left, they're a natural ally for us. So I will reiterate that in terms of RP of like our government right now, it is hyper stagnant. So the industrialists like in the post I put out, which uh, is in the discord I linked it earlier, is essentially that they have economic control and are willing to accept the status quo, though they want reform. There are other, obviously, groups that do want change in Spain. But given our king, King Alonso, is such a radical traditionalist, it is unlikely for that to happen. So he will most likely need to die for that to happen. Now, the only reason I am 
like mechanically not forcing change is I do view him having been a popular commander in previous wars with his traits and such a good operator politically. I view him as able to basically maintain a deadlocking government. So essentially he's able to keep these factions wanting reform at arm's length, probably damaging the country in the long term, but able to keep no reform movements taking level. So unless we start to get like a revolution level and just extreme radicalism going, I'm going to implement almost no reforms for the rest of his life. It will be when our, our dear friend Amadeo de Bourbon becomes king, whenever that is, that we will see more literally radical change. So that is the current state of things. And the industrialists are in power in the sense that they are just pushing for economic policy above all else. Hello there. Your Majesty Bourbon. Hello, my name is Valentino Corona. I'm a man of God like you. I have come to speak on an urgent matter. Of course. Welcome to Madrid. A fellow Catholic son and one from a nation close to the crown's heart is always welcome. What brings you here in such haste? Your Majesty, you understand, I am sure, the grave implications of what is going on in the American continent now. The United We've... States funds, if I must, all of our educations. However, in doing so, they spread their vile ideology throughout our continent. My party, despite being the second largest in the nation, has been brutally suppressed by more American-leaning parties. And as elections approach, I fear the same is going to happen, but perhaps even worse. We've heard whisperings as to the intentions of the United States. I apologize. What used to be the Great Eagle. We know that many nations are being forced down this path for many reasons. And we do... We have great affection for the suffering of Mexico, a nation who shares much with our own country. Is there anything you are requesting and ways in which we can help you? We know that you well, are more or less a subject status underneath the communist threat to your north. Yes, and I will say, I am going to be running in this next election. Hopefully, my party is successful and the elections are made fairly. But in the event that it does not, I plan to seize power on my own. I have a coalition consisting of my industrialist friends and the armed forces against Mr. Terreros, the more liberal-leaning, if I must, dictator at this point, even though he is not even the president. It is a grave situation, but we ask for Spanish backing in case the United uh, Syndicates, as they like to call themselves, attempts to fix what has uh, happened. It is a dangerous thing to take on such a great Goliath. Would your faction be willing to send a representative to the Conference of Barcelona? We will be hosting a meeting of concerned powers in Europe and elsewhere who wish to see action taken to stop this threat and offset the actions of the syndicalists, the anarchists, and the communists in America. There we could find perhaps some support for not just Spain, as I am afraid as much as it pains me to say it, that we are completely unable to give you the support needed alone. We will. I will send our most pious man, Father Santa Diana. A former Good. general, but... A warrior, a... a soldier, and a man of God. Uh, he will find many friends in Spain. Indeed. And if my attempts are successful, this decree here, and perhaps even at your conference, our nation will stop its fervent and blind cooperation with the Bank of the United Syndicates. And 
What if, it, we'll in, the po in the post, in, if we were able to support your getting independence, just to clarify, your faction is made up of the interests of what organizations? We do wish to clarify that we are aligned with you. We can tolerate liberals, but we do wish clarification here. It is our uh, more well-off people, the Catholic Church, the armed forces, and of course, my, uh, my own groups of industrialists. I myself am the owner of a very large steel manufacturing company. One of the most profitable companies in all of Mexico, in fact. I see. Those are both groups that we work with closely here in Madrid, as well as many of the nations who will be gathering. We have no issue then. Mexico is a country that should stand on their own. Your economy is half of our own. You have grown into a strong nation in your own regard. And if it is one run by such values, we would look forward to seeing it stand as an example for such things to the world and the Americas. We will give any support we can. I can assure you of this. I thank you, your majesty. We will notify you when the Barcelona conference is happening. In the meanwhile, anything I can give your faction for support, do not hesitate to send a communication to my government. We will not. We thank you for your support. And we thank you for being a loyal servant of God and a man who pursues his values despite all danger. Absolutely. We would not be on this planet without our Lord. It is good to hear you say that. Safe travels home. May the Lord watch over you. And may the future be bright for both of us. God bless you, your majesty. And God bless you. Good morning. Hello there. Uh, this is an ambassador from the Kingdom of the Netherlands. I wish to speak with you on foreign affairs. Of course. I am the foreign minister of Spain representing his majesty and the crown. Uh, would you like some refreshments before we begin? Uh, thank you. That's most kind of you. Of course. See you from the colonies. Always good. The British do have some things, right, I will say. What policies do you specifically wish to discuss or regions? Um, currently we are... Uh, we've been made aware of some rumors of a anti-American coalition forming, uh, specifically to combat the syndicalist threat that has taken over the United States. Uh, and we were told to uh, visit you if we on um, on affairs of such nature. To clarify, it is not an anti-American coalition. It is that will be a component of it, but it is a conference in Barcelona to explicitly discuss a treaty or an organization to combat all forms of radicalism, of which. Of course, the United States is the most extreme version currently existing in this world. Just to clarify, so you are aware of what this is. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, I would I like to discuss with you the Dutch entry into such a conference, if you would be so willing. I must say, I, I have much surprise, as last we heard, uh, the Dutch had begun to reform, and uh, we had fear that you would go more radical. But given you are a fellow imperialist power, and given that you have, from... Uh, from the notes I've just been handed by my minister here, are of a reasonable sort. We see no issue with this. I know that Spain and the Netherlands have butted heads many times, but it is the uh, my opinion of my government that ideology takes precedent over most other at this point, and we're glad to see that is the case for you as well. Likewise, it is very good to see that we have a common understanding on the threat to these radicalist elements, such as the right of play. Uh, we do not wish to see this scourge press, uh, spread across Europe any longer and destabilize the current peace and security we have maintained. Uh, we appreciate you accepting our entry into such a conference. Uh, I assume you will let us know when the conference is in, in session? It, absolutely. Uh, out of RP, uh, given this last minute, I think I'm going to try and host it like the, the, like the beginning of next session. Just heads up out of RP. That's fine. Yep. So We'll have some time throughout the week to, to do some out of RP talks for it too, so. Um, wonderful. I am very glad that you came and spoke with me about this, as it is always a great flock who can withstand the wolf, and we do have, indeed, a very ravenous one in the West. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at the conference. Is that the only thing you came here to discuss, or was there anything else? I believe so. Um, mm. if you would be willing, I would be willing to make purchases of uh, several colonial territories if you would be so willing. But that may be a matter for another uh, another day. 
Well, the policy of Spain, as always, as we have told you, is that we only wish to acquire, not to sell, I'm afraid. We could say the same to you. Are there any uh, potential talks to be had for buying of Dutch colonies? Currently, no, we do not. We've already sold the majority of the colonies we were wishing to sell. Uh, as of right now, we do not have any wishes to sell any colonies. Very well. If you do change your mind, my government is in a place to uh, facilitate that. All right. Well, I appreciate your aid. Thank you. And you as well. We look forward to seeing you there. Farewell, Minister. Farewell. Oh, last minute. Um, do you know who, where I can find the result of the, uh, the treaty from the Great War as to... Yes, it, it's in the Europe RP chat. I don't know if he removed it. I know there were some stipulations and some issues last minute with it, but I, it was posted in there. It may still be there. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, who posted it? Do you know? It was a Skova. He was the one who made it. It was absolutely fantastic. If you actually, let me go look for it because I want to post that to my stream real quick too because it was really cool. I just want to see like which specific territories were exchanged. Uh, do you um, know I who... don't... Go ahead. Out of RP, I don't know if the French contacted you, but the uh, the French were given right to uh, invade Zanzibar and then to take Tanganyika. Uh, I got Western uh, Germany's holdings. Russia got everything it has now. And then Buganda was supposed to be independent, as well as Southern Madagascar from France being transferred to us colonially. And then Abyssinia became a puppet state of uh, the Italians, which will be save edited. That is the... So you get all the German claims in the Congo? Yes. It's a shame. I was hoping we would get our still maintain our claim on Abyssinia as a protectorate. You do got to remember that the Berlin Conference is always only maintained for as long as people can maintain it. Mm -hmm. Let's well, see. I do. It does look like it was potentially removed. I know it's in um, highlighted RP though. It is in highlighted RP. So yeah, you can you can go look there. I'm going to link that too right now because it is really cool. Wait, no, it was also removed there. There it is. Highlighted RP. Yeah, I guess I guess they completely removed it. I know they wanted to change some things in it, so I guess that's what this is. All right. Yep. Anything else, Ambassador? Not that I know of. I appreciate your time. Of course, you as well. We need more engines. We need more glass. We need more tools. We need more everything. My god. We're growing, though. That's good. Also, did 4A into PDX MP for me was uh, Victoria 2 RP MP uh, forums. Really? I didn't know that was a thing. So nice to see it's not dead. No, it's still kicking. RP's still around. If you're still here, Groogie. Um, well, there's our group, which is pretty big. I mean, I, our, our RP server's got, like, I think almost 3K people. Then there's the PDX RP server, too, which I think is, like, 6K. So it's still fairly active with Paradox. Um, hello there. I think so. Ah, uh, we have... We are good to see you again. We uh, have some things to discuss. If of course. Back. Welcome. Is this uh, a master of the governor or the governor himself? Uh, this is uh, the governor himself, or the situation is quite the uh, interesting one. Of course, I, I'm the ambassador then uh, in the in Manila, and I can send a telegram uh, back to uh, and get messages back to my uh, my the government, of course. So, what what can we help you with, governor? Well, there are a few things we would like to discuss. Firstly, it has come to our attention through Chinese newspapers that uh, there has been apparently some kind of talks between the Spanish royal crown and uh, Beijing about the issue of uh, our nation, the Philippines. Would you like to elaborate on this, sir? We were approaching the Qing's government to understand and get on the same page in Asia. It has always been the policy of the Spanish crown to ensure collaboration with the Qing rather than anything else, as we view it to be more beneficial that way. We discuss specifically further collaboration in Asia and what it requires on both ends. For us, that is the maintaining of the Philippines as a crown colony. And for them, it came with a requirement that you be given more rights and autonomy, something we are very open to and had actually planned a breach with you in the future, though it looks like our timetable will be moved forward a bit. You have proven yourself to be a capable nation. The working spirit and innovation of the Filipino people is without question in Spain. And given our recent reforms in, I suppose, more openness and collaboration in all regions of the empire, we are 
in talks with the Qing to dictate, I suppose, a, a lessening of your direct status as a crown colony of Spain. Now, to speak with you as to what we had planned to offer in the future, as you know, last time we spoke, we did give you license to begin to produce industrial goods, a major step towards your path as becoming a modern industrial country, which we see you have done exceptionally well with. Moving forward, we are willing to give you an imperial charter in order to produce all industrial goods, assuming you take into account Iberia's own specific industries, such as glass, iron, I apologize, glass, steel, and engines, which are a pinnacle importance to our economy, as well as allowing for some political freedoms and representation in your government, as well as potentially lessening or entirely removing your direct payments to the crown. And lastly, uh, we were discussing the possibility of the opening of a royal mint in Manila, giving you some degree of control over the printing. Obviously, you would need to be in line with Iberian policy, but we would give you some leave to print more or less and directly have some measure of control over uh, the Spanish uh, currency. Hmm, I see. Well, that would be a great honor, sir. And I, I, I assure you that when the time comes, we will be ready to uh, accomplish that. Good. So to make you aware uh, of that situation, the reason we did not approach you first, like I said, is we plan to wait a, another five to ten years to approach you about this, but the, the Qing's demands have kind of, as I said, moved this forward quicker. I see. Well, at least we now know what the meaning behind the Chinese newspaper was and that it was not lying in any way. So... It is not. Thank you for your tra transparency, sir. Uh, of course. The next, the next thing we would like to discuss is the status, the status of our economy. So um, recently, we have managed to uh, modernize our uh, our um, our navy, our navy, sir, and we have uh, been able to int introduce ironclads and heavier guns on our ships. So we have a more modern presence on near the, in the sea of China. Uh, uh, along with that, uh, we have been able to entirely uh, use up all the arable land in the Luzon state of our nation, and all of those uh, raw goods are now being sent to sent to uh, sent to Spain. And I hope that they are, will be useful in the uh, in the economic growth of the mainland. They most certainly are. Yeah. I don't need to tell you, Governor, how important of a, a part of the Spanish market. Uh, your nation is. You have those numbers. They speak for themselves. I see. Uh, but now here comes the main problem, sir. Uh, by using up all the arable land around the Luzon area, uh, our our peasants have seemed to run out of space where to live, sir. We have over a million, over a half a million unemployed people just roaming around the countryside waiting for anything to work. Uh, with the recent uh, discussions about the uh, ability to industrialize we are willing to go along with the plan to industrialize manila to get those uh, unemployed people to work for we are running out of space to put we weren't aware resources. it was uh as egregious to to this level we, we had no idea um i would be i i will send uh, a telegram and get contact back with my government in spain if if you would uh if you would give me a day to make them aware of the situation and get a response from the king to to, to better uh, see what I'm allowed to give you as a response. Would you, would you mind coming back in a day? Out of RP, you can stay. I just want to do that RP-wise. Yeah. Uh, understood, sir. That's just Wonderful. another thing we'll info right. about. So out of RP, I didn't know that was happening. We would have contacted the Spanish government. Given everything else, they would have been overlooking the Philippines, didn't know you had this crisis. So we will now have a proper response from you from King Alfonso and the government. Um, Governor, I have uh, received a... Leave to negotiate with your government and provide some options for you. We were not aware that your unemployment issue had grown to this level. And to be frank, our unemployment issue in Iberia itself is a problem. We seem to have a bit of the opposite here. And given we are in a joint economy, there's no reason uh, this cannot be used to both our advantages. The king has given me leave to provide you a royal charter and a crown charter to begin to produce 
all industrial goods with the exception specifically of steel, glass, and engines. Everything else your government has leave to build and to produce. Is this something that you think would be effective in dealing with your current crisis in Manila and your country? Uh, this will definitely do, sir. However, we would like to ask uh, Crown if it, is it allowed that we be uh, that we be given a certain uh, certain how should I say it uh, uh, economic boost to be able to industrialize at a fast pace, sir. Uh, you were, you were, you were uh, seeking uh, governmental uh, explicitly. Yeah, let me take a look at uh, the numbers here and what I was offered by uh, the government. What I can do for you. of RP. I just need to balance my budget so I can do it for you. How much would that be? We can absolutely do that. I I'll send a message to Spain and we'll begin to uh, to get that ruling immediately. That is very that is very good news to hear. So. We are also but, uh... willing in order to expedite this to forgive all of your current debt in your government and uh, we have no strings attached to facilitate this better as well. Uh, that is a uh, very good news for our government. Sir. You have no idea how much this means for our of nation. Of course, you you as I have said, our your your nation is a respected one in Madrid. The the king himself considers you to be the pinnacle crown colony, and anything we can do to help you grow stronger. And I must put this clearly to you, Governor: the seas ahead are choppy and wild. There will be conflict. You must prepare your nation to weather the storm and to be ready for what is to come as radicalism is seizing all over the world and we hope that you will be ready to face that threat with us well that was actually one of the one of the one of the topics we'd like, we'd like to discuss as well with you ambassador uh recently we have been informed about a certain uh, anti a certain movement across europe against the socialist and communist uh, uprisings that happened in the nations of Europe. Uh, we would like to be, uh, we would like to know the, the position of uh, Madrid on, on those issues. But we are ready, if need be, uh, to introduce a certain police force to deal with problems here in Manila as well. We are going to be hosting a conference in Barcelona, which as a Crown Colony governor, you or any of your tenants are welcome to attend to speak with like-minded, worried countries. Oh my God, Austria just blew up. That's crazy. Whoa. Holy fuck. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, oh my God. And did Italy get Croatia? Yeah, it seems like so. No, I didn't. It's just the same color. Wow. Okay. That's, that's big. I mean, they, they were so weak after the ending of the, the war. All right. Regardless, back in RP, uh, we are having a conference in Barcelona to discuss with countries, the future and what action can be taken. Uh, if you would like to send a representative to be there as of course, a friend and member of the Spanish empire, you are welcome to, uh, we are looking for conclusive and definitive actions that can be taken, as well as explicit treaties that require action, not just discussion moving forward. I see. Well, then, uh, the, the Manila, uh, then Manila will be more than happy to send a representative to the coming Barcelona conference. Sir. We would also like to, along with this, express our uh, worry about the recent European wars that have been raging for. They seem to have been very rash and cost a lot of people their lives. And this political instability was brought upon by the actions of Europe. I hope that, uh, I hope that things will be able to stabilize in Europe after all these useless we wars. We fully agree with you. The war of the Germanic ones was a necessary one after their actions against the Spanish Empire, as well as many other European countries. But now, we do wish to see an ending of these ceaseless wars, as there are larger threats, and we only make ourselves weaker. So the crown does fully see eye to eye with you, Governor, on that matter. Uh, that's good to hear that we have sane, sane minds across the world as well, and not the uh, warmongering ones that seem to have seized Europe in the recent decades. But anyway, we are thankful for all this information you have provided, Ambassador. You would just like to say, are there any uh, any directives from Madrid about the future of uh, 
uh, the Philippines. Are there anything specific you would like to wish us to focus on? Grow your strength, grow your power, grow your industry. Remember that Spain is strongest united. And if we do not stand together, the radical will take hold and the radical will see us all brought to nothing. You must prepare your economy, you must prepare your navy, and you must understand that the war will not be without conflict and that you will be asked as we will to stand against these threats. Keep all that in mind going forward and prepare yourself. We hope that this will take time and we will have an era of peace before us, but still yourself for the possibility they may not be. Understood, Ambassador. Well, let it just be known officially that Manila will stand by Madrid through all, all the future problems that may arise. We will stand together. We will rise together. The Empire is bright. The sun looks down upon us, and we will see a future for prosperity. I will send your missive back in a telegram to my government and make them aware. Anything you need from us, you always have a line of communication open with me and, of course, with the Crown. Understood. Thank you for your time, Ambassador. Uh, long live Spain, and may our empire be a stable and prosperous one. And may Goodbye. God watch over you. As well as you. Goodbye, Ambassador. You're welcome. I didn't realize he had such a... <laughs> industrial crisis we have the opposite problems in spain we just don't have enough people at all and in the philippines it is soon uh they have the opposite problem they have lots of people unemployed so we'll compensate we are giving a lot of power over to them which is potentially dangerous but alfonso is an expert colonial administrator he understands this is necessary to keep their loyalty as well as to bolster the empire and to reach a deal with the ching speaking of a deal with the ching i think that will be our last diplomatic talk today as I did not get a reply from Russia. Mm -hmm. Nope, there's a giant talk going on. Um, yeah, nope. We will interrupt that. Hopefully he'll be out in a little bit. I'm going to work on the really focus in on things before the end of the game today. Transferred states to us. What the fuck did we get? Annex? The hell is this for? They're trying to give us Lindy? That's supposed to go to France, unless there was a change. No idea. I'll join the Discord. My join if my Sunday slot opens up. For sure. Yeah, they're, they're really fun games. The Vic ones are nice. Uh, we had a Game of Thrones RP game, which was really good. And we're starting the tours and tournaments next week. And I, I will let you know, uh, guys know why I was up till 5 a.m. last night. I'm working on a, on, a, on a CK3 music video. I kid you not. So in the upcoming CK3 tournaments and tours DLC, it's going to be for the HRE. And I'm going to be playing, hopefully, the Count, uh, the Habsburgian Count in Switzerland, who is going to become beguiled and uh, fall in love with Matilda of Tuscany. And uh, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be putting together. He he's basically going to sing to her and write poetry. And I'm putting together a really shitty CK3 music video for that. So it's silly, but I thought it'd be fun. And I was a little obsessed with that last night and stayed up way too late. So yeah, the CK3 RP games are really fun. There's a lot of Cool stuff in those. I can't wait for that game. I think it's going to be really cool. Okay. Um, we need engines so badly. Engines are like the number one thing currently holding back our economy by a lot. I'm almost tempted to protect domestic supplies. I'm going to do that. Uh, actually, I'm already doing that. A lot is being taken from Portugal. I don't think we're at the place to embargo them, but we really are beginning to grow hostile with them. We can't put up enough tariffs to protect our supply there. Hey, Hamu, how do you feel about turn-based games? I think I remember you talking about wanting to try some new games, which you could RP in, and I have a suggestion if you like that genre. Yeah, I definitely do. Uh, the, the games I'm going to do some RP campaigns with outside of this going forward are going to be Total War games and then probably uh, RimWorld. But uh, what, what are you suggesting? I'm curious. 
I'm going to take a wild guess and say Age of Wonders, but happy to hear what you are suggesting. Not putting the intelligentsia in power. We're good on most of these. I don't think I'll go free trade. We might go laissez-faire at some point. We're not there yet. Poor laws have a lot of support. We're also not there yet. Let's balance our budget as well. Um, I'm going to remove the crees and I want to get one more tax good going. Qualification access. How much is it to do that? You can do a tobacco one for a hundred. Okay. Here we go. Balance budget. Have you heard of the banner banner saga? Yes, those are really fun. I I played them. I've played all three of them. Such great storytelling. It's kind of a narrative-driven XCOM. Yeah, the combat system I always loved with it. it. It was very unique and really fun. The music for it's fantastic. The arts for it is fantastic. The story is amazing. It is very good. We have oil? Oh my god, we have a lot of oil. We have oil in Akka? We have oil in Navara? Hold on. Is it valuable for exporting it? No, not really. Yeah, we don't have any industries I don't think we can use oil in yet. And we could vacuum canning. We would need to get a good degree of oil, though. A lot of fish. That's actually worth doing. A lot of food industry would come out of that. We need 180 oil. We get how many from each of these? 60. We need three. We'll make four just to be safe. I'll put them in Navara too. And then we'll need a bunch more fish, which we should be able to get if we go for steam trawlers. That's whaling. No, we're already on steam trawlers. That is unfortunate. Why are we... Oh, we just... We need more fish. <laughs> Simple as that. Wow, okay. Another thing we don't have the people for. Fishing, 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 fishing. There you go. Have you ever played Battle Brothers? Yes. It's a little too brutal for me. I do like the mechanics. I sometimes like brutality games. That game is just a little too much, I'll be honest. Like, it is. It is rough. And I get attached to people I play in RPGs, so it's a little hard when, like, your whole team is gone. You have vacuum canning. Nice. And yeah, we lose so much money doing that. We'll, we'll, we'll be patient. Yeah, Banner Logan is so nice. Better Saga, I should say. It was, it was so creative, though, the story and, like, the events, the characters, and the format, too. Going along that river is fucking wild. Okay, we should have the money for electrifying our country now. Not yet. We get a lot more. some lag one second here conservative gained over 50 percent of the votes expect the letter from me sounds good i feel that i played it like a month ago and lost a lot of characters i cared for yeah i i downloaded it i played it i enjoyed it but it was so brutal i kind of stopped enjoying it we have way too much grain
We're trying to transition away from an agricultural economy and offset with imports. We're also getting a lot from the colonies like the Philippines. So we're just going to cut a lot of these jobs and hopefully move these workers more into factories, which we really need people for. can remove all these let's make sure we have a stable amount of grain imports production wise though a lot of it's coming from farms in the colonies we have 3,000 dependent on trade um yeah, we're fine we can remove all these buildings we're just completely moving a lot of the peasants off of plantations and farms in spain which is a huge event but been a long time coming in many ways we have some more labor here how's america looking compared to the others let's take a look uh, just broken. Oh, fucking Christ. Um. Jesus Christ. Uh, very, very strong. Make this steel. We'll get the rest of there. You heard of Banner Saga? I guess I'll take another shot and ask you if you heard of Damina. And that I have not heard of. No, Burgundy. I have not heard of that one. We actually be able to get rid of almost all of our farms. We want to keep them. I'll get rid of all of our wheat farms. We'll keep the millet farms. And we'll keep the majority of the rice farms. We explicitly want to remove them in place where we're out of people. And have better jobs available to us. We have port access in the colonial region, right? We do. What is this war still doing? Whoa. Britain is currently at war with Turkey. They uh, Turkey's trying to take Egypt, and then Britain is trying to liberate Palestine and Macedonia. Interesting. More wars in Europe? Lost a lot there. Did we have enough uh, people to maintain these jobs? We might need to make a lot more. No, we don't. Good. That's what we want. Akka specifically... We have 30,000 people free. We can't get the rubber there yet. We should be able to get the oil, which we don't need a lot more of, to be fair. Coffee is super valuable there. Wooden camp is not. Iron mines are... Sulfur mines are ridiculously valuable. Let's make that a sulfur producer. So Gladiator owner Sim... I, I have seen that actually on the Steam homepage, though. Uh, you train gladiators to fight and upgrade and defeat champions around the Roman Empire. Also gets a good soundtrack and goes hard. It's like a fighting thing and then like a customizing and upgrading game, right? I think I have seen that. It did look interesting. That might be fun. How did Italy get all of North Africa's land? They forced a treaty on the, on the Turkish as a part of the war that uh, Russia fought with them recently. That is how they got it. We also have been serving a site, uh, site for a skyscraper. We're not the first. Switzerland has one. I think the French have one. Uh, we'll, we'll not be one of the first, but we are going to build one in Madrid since it is the hub of a great empire. There's no reason we would not have it. Where else do we have unemployed people? I want specifically more motor industry. Go ahead and move the timeline forward on the oil rigs. No, they're already being built. We're fine. Well, there's some drama around the game's creator being transphobic or something. Was there? Did not know that. That'd be gross. Oh, the soundtrack. Take a look at that. Games with good soundtracks are so fucking nice. That's why, like, I always respected that Paradox always does have top-tier game tracks. The one thing I actually enjoyed so much about Imperator is a poorly executed game, but their soundtrack is, I think, the best out of any Paradox game. It is absolutely fantastic. Let's go for torpedo boats in our navy as well. We're going to need more ammunition. A lot of it, too. 190 and then more small arms. We might be able to actually get that... Hold on. Oh, 
Oh, and that is the game in too. So we'll end here for today. We're in good shape. We're in really good shape, actually. Our economy has really done well. We have managed to get ourselves some protection. We've got an anti-communist group we are beginning to build. And uh, we have a lot of colonial expansion. So this has been a really good game for today. Uh, we are going to go play some Grand Campaign because I slept through the morning stream. So we will be continuing with House Taurus here in just a moment. Actually, I don't have the DLC for the thing, so uh, we'll do that. Yeah, let's, uh, let's hop over onto the Grand Campaign. I'm going to stop it.